بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين قال الله تعالى وما أنفقتم من شيء فهو يخلفه وقال تعالى وما تنفقوا من خير فلأنفسكم وما تنفقون إلا ابتغاء وجه الله وما تنفقوا من خير وف إليكم وأنتم لا تظلمون صدق الله العظيم This chapter is about spending the wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Normally, because people love their wealth, they love money. They don't like to spend it out. We like to keep everything for ourselves. And whenever you see someone else has something good, you feel like you want to have something similar. How many times we go to the store and we end up buying same things that we already have, but this seems to be a little different we have a dress and you found another one you want to buy that one just because you like something on that dress and then you go in another store and you find a jacket and you want to buy that jacket just because you like the color of it whereas you may already have three four jackets in your closet You go to the store and find some shoes. You feel that this is on sale. Let me just get it, keep it for some time. And this is all a sign of the gain, of worldly gain and of this materials, which is not a good thing to have. We keep on collecting and collecting. And finally the person dies leaving everything behind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question him about all of these things. Why did you just buy it and keep it there? Why did you waste all of that money for? Whereas there are thousands of people in the world who are starving to death. People who are not even being able to pay their bills. People that are not able to pay their bills. There are people who are dying of cold and they don't have even proper clothing, forget about having jackets. People who are wearing, who are walking barefoot and they can't get anything to put on their feet and we have five, ten pairs of shoes at our homes. We buy new stuff and then we go and try to throw some, all the, some, some of the old one out because we don't have any space to keep those, the new ones. And we are wasting our money. We are wasting our wealth. And all of these things, what will be the end of it? Either they will go into the garbage or we will go under the ground. One of the two things. See some of these nice clothes that we have, we wear nowadays. After a year or two, we won't like them anymore. This might be the same dress that we paid so much money to buy it. And then we took so much care of this one that we didn't want nothing to fall on it. Someone was playing around us and 
just with the fear that they will splash something on us, we will curse those people, we will fight with those people. And some years later, the same thing with our own hands, we will throw it in the garbage can. It will go into the trash. This is the reality of it. And this is the end of it. And see the people who are dying. They die, their closets, closets are full. There are so many shoes, there are so many dresses, there are so many bed sheets, there are so many pillows, there are so many comforters, and they are going to sleep on dust. They will leave this world with just some pieces of sheets, some sheets of cloths. And people will throw the dust on them. This is what happens to us. People put us in the ground. They dig a hole for us in the ground. They put us there. They throw the dust on top of us. And they go back home. And now they will start enjoying all of those things that we have left behind. And everyone wants to find out how, many money, how much money did we leave in our account. Now people, other people will be drawing our nice cars. They will be selling all of those nice dresses or they will throw them in the garbage because they don't need them anymore. This is why Islam tells us a beautiful thing to do with this world. When you get something that you like, give it to a poor person who can dress it, who can use it, who can eat it, who can wear it. Whatever we have, give it to those people who might be in need of it. We, alhamdulillah, we have enough. Whenever you feel like buying a new dress, and you know that, alhamdulillah, at your home you have enough, then just say to yourself, can I buy it to someone else? And right away you will feel no. I can't buy it for someone else. If I want to buy it, I should buy it for myself. Or I shouldn't waste the money. I need the money. I want the money. So, see the trick of shaitan. He's telling you if you buy it for someone else, you are wasting your money. But the same thing, if you are buying it for yourself, you are doing the same thing. And whereas buying it for someone else really is not wastage of money. You will be giving it as a gift. You get reward for it. You may give it to your relative, and there is reward of giving it to the relatives. You give it to your friend, there is another reward for that one. Or you give it to a needy person who really needs it, and there is a great reward for that. We like to use up all of that money for ourselves. And we don't like to spend anything out for other people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُهُ Whatever you spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you something better than that, will replace it with a better thing. Whoever gives out anything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever gives out anything as a charity, donations, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gives it to a masjid, gives it to a school, gives it to a needy person, gives it to anywhere where people need it. That person is not losing that. Whatever we spend, the minimum, the minimum, it multiplies by 700. So if you give one dollar, you are getting the reward of spending how much? Seven hundred dollars. That's the minimum. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu yudha'ifu li man yasha. Allah will multiply many falls to whomever he wants. So it can go much higher than that. Seven hundred is the minimum. So if I would tell you today that if you would give me a dollar today, after a few days, I will give you seven hundred dollars. 
everyone will say, let's go for it. That's good, isn't it? So you give me your one imama today. After ne next week, next Jummah, I will give you 700 imama. You give me your Game Boy today. Next week, I will give you 700 Game Boys. You give me your car today. Next week, I will give you 700 cars. Have you seen a sale like this that the store says, buy one, get 700 free? <laughs> no. They tell you, buy one, get one free. And even that buy one, they will increase the price and tell you buy one and get one free. They are not going to give you that one in normal price that normally you can find it in other stores. They will have a product, make sure that they keep a price in such a level that you buy one, get another one free and still they are making money from you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, buy one, get at least 700 free. That's at least. And you may get 7,000. You may get 7 million. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies it as much as He wants according to our sincerity, according to our willingness of spending in His path. So what can be a better deal than this? Having known, knowing this now, Really, our feeling should be that I, let me just go ahead and spend everything that I have. I should be giving everything out. Because if we give it out today, if we give one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply it 700 times at least. And this reward we will get it the time when we will need it the most. The time when we will want to go to Jannah. And each and every one of us will be hoping to go to Jannah. And see the hellfire on the other side. And no one wants to go towards the hellfire. At that time we need all of these things. This is why one of those scholars says. That whenever I like something. I give it out. I spend it in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? He says because if I keep it here. I may be able to use it for a short period of time and then lose it. But if I like it and I would like to keep it, then I spend it out because I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Akhra will give me something better than this, replacing this thing with something better, and it will be at a time when I will never use I will never lose it. When we will never die and we will never lose those things. Nothing will break down over there. It won't be like these plastic things that we use and after a couple of weeks they are broke down. Over there we will have everything permanent. Nothing will break down. The thing, the only thing that is, stops us from spending out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our nafs shaitan who's telling us that you need it. Miserness that's in our hearts and Islam doesn't like miserness at all Normally when you talk to people everyone will say you you are miser So it's a bad quality everyone considers it a bad quality even the disbelievers even the non-muslims consider this a bad quality being a miser But in reality Everyone has this thing in him All of us have this bad thing in us unless we clean it and we purify our hearts and our soul and we tell shaitan, I'm not going to listen to you anymore. A very simple example. If at this time, I would tell you, put $20 in that donation box. You will think, $20? That's too much. I need it. What if I would need it for something else? What if I would need it there? And then you go out on the store and you find something that was the say's original price was eighty dollars and now it's down on sale for twenty dollars. Oh, let me grab it before someone else will buy it. And you will try to run for it. You didn't even go with the intention of buying that thing.
But you saw it, you think it's a good price, and now you are competing with others to buy it. You don't want other people to buy it before you would do. You don't want it to finish before you can buy it. Because you have the importance of that product, whatever it is. We don't have the importance of getting the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why spending it in the masjid is difficult. Spending in the store is easy. See the same thing? You're spending it there, you're spending it here. We go out on the restaurant and you, are, you have some friends also with you and you want to eat something, you say, okay, that's fine, I'll pay the money. And you bring out a $20 bill and you pay. Whereas you know that you can spend the same $20 in the masjid and you're about to do it, you heard a lecture, a long lecture in the masjid that we need the money, we need donations, please, brothers, sisters, help. And you say to yourself, you know, I might need it for gas, I might need it for something else. You may even go to reach your pocket and put your hand there and then you just come out again empty-handed and you say, no, 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 some other time. I'll do it next time. And now you go out with your friends and you want to buy some nice burger, buy some pizza. And you get the $20 bill out very happily and you go and give it to that person and you get the pizza. See the difference? We buy that pizza and we spend the $20 there because we know that we are getting some food. What is the value of these pizzas that we are going to eat comparing to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give us in Akhirah? No value at all. No comparison at all. So we have to understand the reality of our souls. We have to understand the reality of things. Everything, whatever we have, one day we are going to lose it. Nothing will stay for good. Nothing will stay forever. We will lose everything. Today you see a nice dress, tomorrow is dirty. You have to wash it. And after you wash it 15, 20 times, now it doesn't even look good anymore. Then, after some time, we throw it out. So everything that we have, it goes out. We will lose it one day. So the best thing is, when we like something, we spend it in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many times we have a habit. Some people don't even have this, so at least those who are doing it are better, that they would spend only the thing they don't need. You buy a new one, you give the old one to other people. There are people who won't even give the old one to people, they will just throw it away. It's still it's better to give it to people. But at Islam wants us to go a step further. This is also miserness. That you just spend the old one to give, uh, give the old one to people and keep all the new ones for yourself. It should be that we share with other people and give them some of the new ones also. Why the poor people should always use the old dresses that are worn out? Why can't they wear some nice dresses? Why can't we give them some new ones? Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You will not get al-bir. You know what does al-bir mean? Al-bir is a high quality reward. It's a special reward that a person gets. No one will get al-bir. حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ Till you will spend of what you like. See what Allah is saying? That you won't get the great reward of spending till you will spend of what you love. And hatta tunfiqu mimma tuhibun. Till you spend what you love. It's not that you spend what you want to throw it in the trash. So you say, okay, instead of throwing it in the garbage, let me give it to the people. Although that's good. At least give it to people, don't throw it away. But they are doing us a favor by using some of the things that we didn't need. But we have to give those people something that we really need and something that we really like and we love. When this ayah was revealed, one of the Sahaba Ridwanullahi whose name was Abu Talha Ansari radiallahu anhu, he had a nice garden in Medina Munawwara in which he had a well of water and he had his house in the garden also. 
that was his best business. And that garden was considered to be the best garden in Medina Munawwara. He went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, the ayah is revealed, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ We cannot get albir, that great reward, till we spend of what we love. Ya Rasulullah, therefore I love my business. And my great business, my best business is this garden that I have. So Ya Rasulullah, I'm giving out that garden for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Could you think today someone will give out his business and say here the whole business is donation. Take it for the sake of Allah. Use it for the purpose of the masjid. Someone would, would tell us that I would give out my house. I will go to apartment, whatever. Or I will buy another smaller one. But here, take my house for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one does that. But here are the Sahaba Ridwanullah al spending their business in their house. Giving it away. Take it. Ya Rasulullah, take my business. Take my house. If a person... If we hear a masjid who's having that, the masjid having a project of two million dollars, a project of two million dollars to build a nice masjid and a school with the masjid and some other facilities for people, janaza facility, whatever they want to have there. Isn't that too much money? It is. Two million dollars is too much money. But if we look around at our own Muslims, how many people in our communities have houses that are worth $100,000? Normally the houses are worth at least $100,000. And then you would find people who have houses worth two, three $300,000. There are people who have a house of half a million dollars that worth half a million dollars. So one person is having just a house. We are not talking business or anything else. Just a house that worth half a million dollars. How many of those type of people we need to build that masjid of two million dollars? Four people. We need a masjid that worth just the price of four houses of our people. Then we say, no, 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 that's too much. Two million dollars for a masjid is too much. And that person is living in a house that's worth half a million dollars. Four people are living in houses that worth two million dollars. And 500 people or 1,000 people in the community are not able to build a masjid of two million dollars. Why? My house is important. Allah's house is not important. Save the house worth $100,000 that normally in every community you will have at least four or five hundred people who have their own houses. At least. You normally have it. Four or five hundred people who have houses. If we say the house worth each house worth $100,000. <coughs> to collect $2 million, how many $100,000 we need? How many hundred? 20. So how many people we need of those time kind who have spent 100000 for their house? 20 people. Just 20 people <coughs> who are spending $100,000 on their houses. Can they spend the same amount for the house of Allah? But these are some facts of our life that normally we don't talk about. People don't consider them. And even now, if we would go back home and we talk to our families and we tell our friends that it sounds very true, which is a fact, that we need just 200 people. Or 20 people, not 200 people, 20 people. Didn't we build our homes? Don't we have houses that we bought for $100,000? So why can't we spend similar amount for the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You will tell, you will hear, everyone 
shouting at you and are you crazy? Something is wrong with you? What happened to you? You aren't thinking right? But if you tell the same people that this house is a little smaller for us now, so instead of this house, let's buy another house and that house instead of 100,000, that house worth about $150,000, everyone will say, yeah, it sounds a good idea. It's a real good idea. You have a car, and the car, you can drive it anywhere. You can go anywhere with that car. It's not going to break down on you. It's not a 20 years old car. And now someone in the family says, you know, there is another new type of car, which is real nice and has these features, those features. We should, Dad, we should buy that car. And he says, oh, yeah, yeah. Do you people really want it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's go. Let's choose the color. And then our, everyone is going to choose the color. And the masjid, everyone is shouting in the masjid, we need some paint in the masjid. No one wants to go and choose the color over there. This tells us the difference between our love for this worldly gain and our love for akhirah. How much love we have, how miser we are, we are, and how much love we have for this worldly gain. And when it comes to comparing the love of this world again and comparing and the love for Akhira, how less is the love for Akhira in our hearts, in our minds, and yet we consider ourselves one of the great Muslims in the world. Islam always asks us not to have this love. It's a very bad thing to have love for this worldly gain and just run after it. We should have a quality of whatever we earn, we spend also. Have a quality of spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Usman radiallahu anhu, during one of the battles, he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was encouraging Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een to spend their wealth in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was encouraging them. And Usman radiallahu anhu comes and he says, Ya Rasulullah, I will give hundred camels loaded with everything that needed in the battlefield. Hundred camels. You know what was the camels of those days? Camels. Today, if you ask someone to give a couple of goats, they won't even give goats. Forget about giving camels. And for in those days, camels were just like cars for them. Camels were cars for them. What is it that they used to ride on in those days? Horses and camels. It was a type of car. So camels were just like cars for them. Could you think a person comes with 100 cars full of weapons, loaded with food and everything that here, take it and do whatever you want with it. Not even one car. Forget about car, not even a tire. And those Sahaba Ridwanullah al Majma'een, they always wanted to spend everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu anhu, who was one of the wealthiest Sahaba Ridwanullah al Majma'een, his wealth was so much that even today, if we get the wealthiest people in the world, his wealth comes to be more than that. Very wealthy. <coughs> Why? He got a dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, May Allah bless your wealth. He told him that once. He was very poor, didn't have a home to live in. He was homeless. And he used to live with, some, with someone else. He didn't have nothing to eat. Very poor sahabi. And he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him the dua, May Allah bless your wealth. He says, since that day, wealth started coming to me, flow of just, it was a flow of wealth. And he says, now even when I see a stone on the ground, on the floor, I'm afraid to touch it because I may get something from underneath it. This is how much wealth I'm getting. There might be some gold underneath that stone. So I just leave it alone. I don't touch it. He says, I have too much, I don't even know what to do with it. 
and with all of this wealth, once he heard the virtue of spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, today I came with the intention to ask you, and this is what I want to do. I would like to spend everything that I have, give it back in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My business, my wealth, everything that I have, Ya Rasulullah, I would just like to give it away and just live like some of the poor people of Medina Munawwara. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, No, may Allah bless you and bless your wealth, Abdurrahman. Don't do that. <coughs> keep on earning and keep on having your business and keep on spending the way you are doing it in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nowadays we earn, but we like to spend all of it in having nice furniture, nice homes, nice cars. Every year we are changing the cars. Every some time we are adding something into the houses. Every time we are buying new furniture, throwing the old one out. Every time we want to buy some new dresses, new bed sheets, new comforters for our home. And just spending, wasting all of this money for those things. It's just a wastage of wealth. Instead of that, if we use it, we earn. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the people who are earning, earn. But instead of spending it there, let's start building the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If each person who can build a house of half a million or a million dollars, he feels, he says, now I'm going to build, put, and build a masjid somewhere. Go to a small community where people don't have a masjid. They can't afford to build a masjid. There are 15, 20 people in that small community and they are not of the level that they are able to, that, that they can spend their money to build a masjid. Go and build a masjid. Half a million dollars should be enough to build a masjid over there. Go and build a masjid for them over there. Buy a house for them and convert that house into a masjid. will take about $200,000. No, he's going to spend that million dollar at his home, but nothing for the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it, he will spend it in the, uh, for the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, spend $500 or $1,000 and feel that I have done something great. I have done a great favor to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spending $1,000 to his home. We are not doing a favor to Allah. All what we have is from him. Everything that we have, he's giving it to us. Just imagine what if he would have put us in the situation of some of those people who don't even have anything to eat. What if he would have put us in the situation of those people who have to are on, out on the streets. They are begging people. They are begging people for some food. Here in America, you find so many people who are homeless. I don't know if many of you have seen those people. I have seen it as I travel along. Uh, around I have seen people sleeping under the bridges because they have nowhere to go and I said to myself in one of those I was in California and I saw a place where there are people living under a bridge they don't have their homeless people have nowhere to go so I said let me just go around and see just have a look how what these people are doing there it was almost impossible for me to walk over there because on one side they are using the bathroom and it smells so bad that you can't even stand there for some moments and those people are living over there. We have to say to ourselves, what if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have put us in that situation? After all, they are human beings also. All what we have is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing. It's just a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not doing any favor to Allah by giving anything out for His sake. He is doing favor to us by giving us the opportunity, by giving us the wealth, and then giving us the opportunity to spend it for His sake. This is another great blessing of His. There are people who have zillions of dollars. They don't spend it for the sake of Allah. What use they have of that wealth if they don't use it for the sake of Allah, if they are going to spend everything over here and then get nothing in the akhirah from that wealth. So what use they have for that? What's the benefit of having all of that then? Do you think people who have million dollars and another person who has ten million dollars and a third person who has only thousand dollars, do you think this person who has a thousand dollars is able to eat, or he, he eats only one bread and a person with million dollars eat five bread and the person with 10 million eats 15 bread every day? There's nothing like this. They all eat the same amount of food, whatever. 
everyone has to fill his belly. A person who doesn't have no money, still you see him, mashallah, he's full. And keeps it full all the time. Never gets empty. And this is the use we have. That's all we can do with it. So we have to realize, whatever we have is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should have a habit of trying to spend it out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead of trying to build our places over here, let's build our place in Akhirah, in Jannah. And whatever we spend in the, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are getting it in Akhirah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace that thing with something from Jannah in Akhirah. And at that time we will be hoping if we would have spent everything for the sake of Allah in this life, so we get it over there and we get much more over there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith that a person was walking and as he was walking he heard a voice from the cloud saying someone saying to the cloud that go and rain shower the rain on the garden of such and such person <laughs> someone was telling the clou cloud he couldn't see who is that person, who's talking. So he knew it has to be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he saw the cloud started moving to a certain direction. So he started walking the same direction. He wanted to know who this man, who's this man. Must be a very virtuous person. Must be a very important person that the cloud is getting a special order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go and shower the rain on his garden. So he started following it. At one point, the cloud stopped and started showering the rain. And all the rain was getting into the garden of a person. And that person was distributing the water in the garden equally to different uh, parts of the garden. So he went into the garden. And he asked the person, what's your name? He said, why do you want to know my name? He said, can you please tell me your name? I would like to know your name. So he told him his name, and it was the same name that he heard in the cloud. <clears throat> so he asked him, why did you ask my name? He said, the reason I asked you for your name was because this is what I heard. And he told him the whole story. And I followed the cloud and it started raining here and here you see all the water is coming to your garden. So now he says, please, you have to tell me what a special deed that you are doing in your life for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specially ordered the cloud to come and rain at your garden. Whereas everything around you is dry. So he said, since he told me all of this, so now I have to tell you. The only thing I do is, of course, he fulfills all the duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But with my wealth, the special thing that I do with my wealth is, every year, when I get the product of my garden, and I make money out of it, I spend one third in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have divided my wealth into three parts. One third goes straight back to, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One third, I put it back into the garden because, you know, you have to put some money back into the business and have more product. And one third, I spend it on my family. Doesn't go more than one third to my family. Doesn't go more than one third back into my business. And one third goes into the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, for those who work, if they want to do it this way, so we say, okay, I get the paycheck. As soon as you get the paycheck, you take one third. You go right away, give it out in the path of Allah, or you save it, and you keep on spending from that in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the end of the month, all of that thing is gone. And one third, we keep it for the family, and one third, we use it for our own needs or, well, uh, back to business and whatever, however we have, whatever type of business we have, if not a business, then whatever machinery or equipment we have at our homes. 
So at least if we fix that amount, some amount, that person was doing one third. Say if a person says, hundred dollars out of every paycheck will go out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then this person will be looking forward to spend out in the path of Allah because as he has these hundred dollars, he feels that now I have some burden on my shoulder. I have to give it out quick. But there is, if there is no fixed amount, then the person feels, okay, inshallah, I will see when I want to spend. I will think about it. Later on, I will do it. It's not a burden on his shoulder at this time. So one of the good things to do is always fix some amount. That whenever we get paid, that much should go out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the rest we will use it for ourselves and however we want to use it. So, this is what Islam wants from us. Whatever we have, spend the extra in the path of Allah. In the beginning of Islam, the order was, people went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they asked him, how much should we spend, Ya Rasulullah? The ayah of Quran was revealed. Yas'alunaka madha yunfiqoon. They ask you what to spend. What is the reply? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Qul. Qul il af. You know what does afu means? Whatever is in excess of your need. You got a paycheck. Thousand dollars. You feel that you will be spending five hundred dollars. You have to spend the remaining five hundred dollars in the path of Allah. This was the order in the beginning of Islam. Qul il af. Whatever is in excess of your need, you have to give it out. No choice. If we would have been there, I don't know how many of us will be true believers to give it out, and how many of us will Ayazubillah be the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, to hide it away and feel, we'll see at the end of the month what to do. And then try to spend as much as we can, so we use the whole money for our souls. And the order was, you, have, you use only as much you have to use. And the remaining, just give it out. You are not allowed to keep it. Then later on, the order changed. And then the zakah order came. And now we have to give out the zakah. That's must. But other than that, Islam encourages us to keep on giving these sadaqat and charity. So that the love of this worldly gain will keep on getting out of our heart. Is a beautiful way of getting the love of it out of our heart. If we want to spend it, the love will keep on getting into the heart and into the heart. And these things will, stuck, will get stuck into our heart. And then we will be looking at people. Here, this person has this car. I would like to have this. Other person has that dress. I would like to have this. A third person has a nice game. So I would like to have that thing. So everything you see, your heart is stuck with the worldly gain, with this plastic and metal and dust. And every time you are just looking for these things. If we have a habit of spending it, you have some nice games. You see people in the neighborhood who don't have... They can't afford, those children, they can't afford to buy it. You play some time, you go and give it to them. Okay, go ahead. You people take it, you play with it. They, their parents will make dua for you. They will make dua for you. And we make a habit of doing things of that kind. But make sure you don't do anything of that kind without, especially I'm telling the children, that don't do anything of that kind without having a permission from your parents. Don't give anything away without having the permission of your parents. But the habit you need to generate in yourself is not to buy all of those things and waste your money in buying these things. When we beg our parents, I need this, I need that, I need that, I need a better one, I need a, the, another one from the better store. Just don't have that habit. Keep the minimum. Keep the minimum that you have to. And once you get it, then you are not allowed. In fact, you have to remember this rule. You are not allowed to give it out without having a permission and willingness of your parents. So can't, you don't spend anything without having that permission from your parents. But have a habit of not running after these things and not running from store to store trying to look for better products and more things. And for adults, of course, we have to keep on spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of buying it for ourselves, buy it for someone else. And there are some more hadith, inshallah, we will talk about those hadith in our next sessions. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'ir al-muslimina wa al-muslimat wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.